acne, acne, acne. Yes, I love it. Give me more of it. Said nobody ever. Hello. <laughs> All right, so yes, let's get rid of acne. Let's never experience it again. Is it possible? Yes, it is. And it's actually really, really easy. Um, well, today it's really, really, really easy. Maybe not 20 years ago, you know, because we were still kind of studying these things. But now, I mean, everything's pretty much figured out. At least when it comes to acne prone skin or more importantly, acne prone individuals. <sighs> That's a topic, let's delve in. Okay, so basically, we really need to focus on two things. Sebum, aromatase enzyme. <laughs> what are these things? And what is the relating factor right here in the middle that if we can just focus on this right here, solves both of these issues. Drum roll, please. Well, basically it's insulin. Insulin is that little son of a gun who is the culprit to a lot of people, young teens, adults, doesn't really matter who you are. Um, if you suffer from acne, odds are, there's a little guy right here, his name is Insulin, and he is not in control in your body. So let's figure out why. Why? What, what is Insulin's uh, connection to acne? Let's delve in. This is the fun part. Now, okay, so to keep it simple, that's always the goal, keep it simple. Um, to keep it simple, when we eat anything, doesn't matter what it is, we are going to increase our natural production of insulin. Now, little caveat, side note right here. There's actually a scale. It's called the insulin index. Some foods are super high on the insulin index. Uh, for example, dairy proteins are very, very high on the insulin index. So back to over here. Well, just so you know, anything high on the insulin index is going to stimulate our production of insulin more than other foods, for example. I'm sure you've heard of the glycemic index. This is very similar to that. It's just focusing on insulin. Anyway, I've digressed. So when we eat anything, we're gonna produce insulin. And as a result of us producing insulin, we're gonna stimulate the production of something called IGF-1, uh, or uh, insulin-like growth factor. Um, bodybuilders love it, athletes love it, it's good, it's healthy. We need it to be healthy. Um, but it does something for some individuals um, that is not good. Basically, it creates more sebum production. What is sebum? Sebum is that oily stuff uh, that our skin makes that helps keep the pH cool and keeps us waterproof among other things. However, this is a big however, bacteria really love to eat it. <laughs> not good, we do not wanna feed the bacteria because you know the, if you have acne, you've done any research at all, everybody always says, ooh, bacteria is the cause of acne. Not really. That's like a secondary cause, which is not the primary. Insulin is the primary. So basically, when we make more sebum, uh, it's like uh, us telling all the bacteria out there, hey, come to me, I got plenty of food for you to eat. Um, but not only that, the IGF-1, the insulin-like growth factor, um, causes a process in us um, to create a little bit more fat uh, just underneath the skin, which is just an even bigger magnet on a big loudspeaker that says, hey, bacteria, come eat me. I'm tasty and I'm good and I'm delicious and here's a little sebum snack just to you know, start your appetite. Anyway, so that goes on um, anytime we eat any food. Now, as I said earlier, some foods are exceptionally more uh, high on the insulin index like dairy proteins. Now, Little common scenario, let's say you go to Starbucks and you get a mocha frappuccino and yeah, by the way, you want a piece of pumpkin bread or you want a bagel with, uh, I don't know, cream cheese on it. That is just going to cause that little snack meal, whatever you want to call it, that's going to cause your insulin to spike big time, which is going to create a lot of IGF-1 and by extension, a lot of sebum. And as I said earlier, that subcutaneous lipogenesis, that fat just underneath the skin, that's a big loudspeaker for bacteria. Hey, come eat me, I'm tasty. I taste like Starbucks. <laughs> anyway, so that is a cascade of events for acne-prone individuals that's gonna cause acne. Now, 
There's uh, something else that's even worse. Um, typically, we go to Starbucks more than once a month. Maybe it's a few times a week. I don't know. Maybe, we, you know, it's, there's other things that we're eating um, that we're not aware. It's super high on that insulin index. We don't know it, but we're eating it anyway. Uh, long story short, uh, what that does to us, it creates uh, something called insulin resistance. All that means is our body has been used to a level of insulin that isn't really wanted by the rest of your body um, because we're eating super high insulin inducing foods and our bodies are like, look, we, we don't want to be exposed to that much insulin, so I'm going to shut down my own sensitivity to it. So what happens is this leaves more insulin just circulating in your body. You're going to create more IGF-1, which is more sebum, which is more fat, more food for bacteria. It's going to develop something called insulin resistance, and this is going to lead to something over here called metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a video in and of itself. In a nutshell, your hormones are going to be thrown out of whack, your cholesterol, your blood sugar naturally, your blood pressure, etc. Not cool. Um, so if you have acne prone, or if you are an acne prone individual, um, this metabolic syndrome sucks for you. In particular, for two reasons. A, because it's going to mess up your hormones, um, it, long story short, uh, it's going to cause us to have a dysfunction in an enzyme called aromatase. Well, not really a dysfunction. The metabolic syndrome is a dysfunction, and our body is doing its best, it, it, it's very, very best, to deal with that because it's not built and meant to have insulin levels all the way up here constantly all the time. Anyway, so this uh, enzyme called aromatase takes our testosterone and is like, hmm, what can I turn you into? We got a metabolic syndrome going on here and I'm not really sure what I need to do. I'm just going to turn you into dehydrotestosterone, which is a really, really powerful form of testosterone. And then it's going to take estrogen. Yo, estrogen, what's going down in Chinatown? I think there's some stuff going on, so I'm just going to make you as powerful as possible, and it's going to turn that, that estrogen into the, the really, really powerful form of estrogen, that, that 16 hydroxyesterone, that stuff that we don't want, especially for girls, etc. So we have two super powerful hormones going on over here that's going to cause acne. At the same time, concomitantly, we have a lot of IGF-1 being produced over here, that's causing more sebum, more food for bacteria. So we're getting the, the, all the every type of acne you can think of, the, the cystic acne and then the, the, just the other type of little smaller pimples that, are, that, oh, everybody would much rather have if you have cystic acne, the deep, hurtful kind that doesn't any form. Anyway, that's the scenario. How do we fix it? <laughs> The easy thing to do is to just look at the insulin index and see what foods you're eating that, um, is gonna, that you can remove from your diet uh, for short periods of time uh, to re-establish balance. But it's been my experience, most often is the case, people have been dealing with this for such a long time, their body is kind of stuck in a rut. They, they need uh, extra supplementation to help supercharge, energize, and realign uh, some inter internal biochemistry. So what are some things that we can do to fix that? Well, to start correcting the hormone imbalance over here, we can use a supplement called DIM. It's diendol methane. It's just, it's something that cruciferous vegetables have, you know, like broccoli, kale, um, Brussels sprouts. It's, it's a natural supplement that is a concentrate of this DIM, D-I-M, uh, supplement and it is going to help our aromatase enzyme and it's gonna be like yo dude I'm here to help what's going on down in Chinatown I already know let me start stabilizing you <laughs> so it's gonna take the really really powerful form of estrogen that we don't want the bad kind and it's gonna start prioritizing the healthy kind and it's gonna do the same thing with testosterone it's gonna start prioritizing we don't want dehydrotestosterone let's prioritize it to a more docile form. That's going to start improving your acne uh, very, very quickly. Now, here, in, in the middle, <laughs> does this help when I move my hand? Anyway, in the middle, the insulin resistance, we have got to correct that. Otherwise, we're just going to be in this loop over here with the IGF-1 production and the sebum production 
because of the insulin resistance spiking right here. We gotta restore our cell sensitivity to insulin. How do we do that? Vitamin B8, inositol. <laughs> Check it out. That's all we need. Vitamin B8. Well, you know, it used to be, well, it may not actually be a vitamin B8 technically anymore, simply because if you have a healthy uh, microbiome, which probably is not the case, if you did have a healthy microbiome, uh, the healthy bacteria in our stomach, in our gut, produce the vitamin B8. Most of us don't have a healthy microbiome. So most of us aren't going to be producing this simple vitamin B8. Um, we have to have it to help control our insulin levels. Anyway, so inositol, it's awesome. Check it out. It'll start immediately addressing the IGF-1 problem and the uh, subsequent uh, secretion of too much sebum and the subcutaneous lipogenesis, that creation of fat underneath the skin. It's going to start addressing that um, immediately because it's going to start re-sensitizing, um, restoring the, the cell sensitivity to estrogen. So the result is our body doesn't have to produce so much of it. Now, finally, in the meantime, um, we got to do some, something about the bacteria on our skin. I'm not a fan of harsh detergents, face creams, masks, things that, you know, really, really dry the skin out to make it hard for the bacteria to live. I just like to kind of totally stop the bacteria. Something that we can use to do that is silver. Um, silver innately is antibiotic. So what, what that means, just the nature of silver itself is like, it, silver is kryptonite to Superman. The bacteria are the Superman and like silver is kryptonite. Silver is the same, you know, that's what it is. So there's a, a soap, um, I recommend it to a lot of my clients. It's called Cyclic Nano Silver. Uh, but you can use any um, colloidal silver soap uh, on your skin. It is extremely delicate on your skin. It will not dry your skin out. Um, it cleans your skin, sanitizes your skin with silver, which is like benign to us, but to bacteria, as I said, it's kryptonite. Uh, some of my clients even will just wear it as a face mask when they go to bed. That's how gentle it is uh, with your skin. So in a nutshell, how do we get rid of acne? We need to control how much insulin we produce and our sensitivity to it. If we're already in that metabolic syndrome where we got a lot of sebum production, the things that we can use to begin immediately correcting it is DIM, diendol methane, it's gonna help align our hormones. Inositol, vitamin B8, it's gonna start restoring sensitivity to our uh, natural insulin production. Cyclic nano silver or any type of colloidal silver soap on your skin is immediately going to start giving the bacteria on your skin a bad day. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's it. No luck is required. Like if you do this simple protocol, you will definitely see huge changes uh, in your life. And uh, good for you.